today's episode of Toy Time is brought to you by Renata Crawley. Miss Crawley is a science teacher in McDowell County Schools. Miss Crawley is going to take you on an exciting adventure in this episode of Toy Time that explores a specific ecosystem. An ecosystem is a biological community of interacting organisms and their physical environment. Organisms can include things such as the animals of an environment, the plants, or even the insects. Based on this picture, you may have guessed you are about to go visit a river. Listen up to Miss Crawley because you are sure to learn something on this fun science adventure. Hello boys and girls of McDowell County. I am Renata Crawley, fifth grade science teacher, and I am in the Catawba River. It's a little bit chilly, but I'm gonna be okay. Um, I walk the Joseph McDowell Joseph Greenway. It is beautiful. If you get a chance, come on out. Um, so today I'm just gonna talk about how to conduct water quality testing by just looking for macro invertebrates. Macro means you can see them with your eye. Invertebrate means no backbone. And so I just picked up this rock. Let's see if I can walk without falling here. And if you can look at, zoom in on this and see, there's a small little clump of rocks. Underneath these rocks, there's a little insect called a caddisfly larva. And what it does is it spins silk and creates a little cocoon or house for itself for protection. And so I found some over here. I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. Um, and then you'll understand some information on aquatic insects. When we learn about animals or living organisms on land, that's terrestrial. So today we're doing aquatic. And let's see, if you will look right here, this is the caddisfly larva that I was talking about. And it's real tiny right here. It's balled up. It's scared. But it kind of looks like a little caterpillar. And what it does was, like I said earlier, earlier, it will spin silk from the bottom and create this little house. And you can, it'll sometimes it'll make it out of sticks. Fishermen call it stick bait, and they use it as bait. Trout love it. And then here are some mayfly nymphs that I found. And mayflies are very sensitive to pollution because they have external gills. Silt is the number one pollutant in North Carolina rivers. And so if you do not see these in your river, that's an indication that your water, your river could be polluted. They have three tails and their external gills are right here on the side. I don't know if you can see them moving, but they have to have clean water to survive. A lot of people get these confused with stonefly nymphs. Stoneflies usually have two tails and mayflies have three. And then the last one that I found, these, a lot of people call these periwinkles, and you can just find these on the bottom of rocks. The really neat thing about periwinkles or gilled snails is that their pouch opens on the right, and that is a good sign because these snails have to have clean water. If the pouch opens on the left, that's a pouch snail, and you'll find those in stagnated or polluted water. So we have found three important insects that have to have clean water to survive. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the metamorphosis they go through. The caddisfly larva will go through a complete metamorphosis. It starts out as an egg, then it goes into the larva stage. It'll form a pupa and then come out as an adult. Now, the really interesting fact about macroinvertebrates is that they'll spend the majority of their lives in the river, several years. Once they emerge as an adult, they'll mate, lay eggs, and die, and they only live maybe a day or two. And so this is where they spend most of their life, in the river. Now, some of these go through an incomplete metamorphosis, and that means that they'll lay as, a, they'll be an egg, and then they will turn into a nymph. They will shed their skin several times and then emerge as an adult. A dragonfly nymph will go through an incomplete metamorphosis. And when it's in this stage, it's really cool. It has a mask and it's a predator. It eats other insects and it will, that mask will, sh will shoot out and it'll grab prey and bring it back in. Very cool. So 
um, if you'll look at this right here, you can see we have three three categories where macroinvertebrates fit. The top one represents clean water. So you can see there's mayfly, there's the gilled snails, and there's the caddisfly larva, and then there's stonefly. So we found the caddisfly, the gilled snails, and the mayfly today. These macroinvertebrates can live in semi-polluted water. That, there's the crayfish, and I'm sure many, many of you have found those. Also the dragonfly larvas there. And we've got a uh, damselfly larva. And then in the bottom category, if you only find these, that is a good indicator that your river or creek is polluted. There's the pouch snail. And remember what I said earlier, if it opens on the left, and then you have leeches, nobody wants a leech on them, and aquatic worms. So what we're going to do now is play a little game. And I want to see if you can match the larva or nymphs with the adult. So are we ready? I have some helpers here. They're going to tell me if we think the matches are correct or incorrect. All right. First adult, or not adult, but nymph would be the mayfly. And I'm going to point to it and you tell me if you think it matches the adult or not. Uh, do you think this would be it? No. Uh, this one? No. No. This one? No. <laughs> so it, you missed one. It one. was the... The second one you said. Okay, so let's oh. look again. Mayfly has three tails. See if you can look at the characteristics and match what the adult would look like. And I'm going to walk by it, okay? So here we go. These papers are wet, so bear with us. All right. You think it matches that? No. No. This one? No. No. This one? Yes. Yes, very good. Okay, the next one is the stonefly. It has two tails. You think it would be this one? No. No. This one? Yes. Yes, very good. You are so smart. Boys and girls, I hope you're getting this at home. Okay, caddisfly, that's the one we found. Look how cool the little cocoon is. You know, I said that, well, it makes a little home and this is its protection and it'll crawl out of that. Okay, caddisfly adult. Think that matches? No. No. This one? Yes. yes. Yes, you are correct. Okay, crane fly. This one? No. This one? Yes. You are correct. Now, a lot of people think that these are mosquitoes in the springtime. They are not mosquitoes. If you see them in your house, mosquitoes are tiny. Crane flies are really large, and people think they're huge mosquitoes. They are not. They are crane flies, and they are harmless. What I do is just pick them up and put them outside when I find them in my house. Okay, I think this one's pretty easy. Do you think this would match? Um, oh, wait a minute. I got the adult here. Hold on. We're going backwards. Let's go with this. So this is the black fly larva. Do you think it would match this over here or this? First one or second one? Second. second. Very good. Round of applause, round of applause, <laughs> round of applause. And last but not least, the dragonfly nymph. Does it go over here? Yes. Okay. Voila! You made a hundred! Okay, boys and girls. If you go to a river or a creek, make sure you have an adult with you. You could easily get your foot stuck in a rock and then you'd be stuck. So always practice safety first. But if you get a chance, come out here to the Joseph McDowell Greenway. You will not regret it. Have a good day and remember. In this episode of Toy Time, you learned about some of the organisms that live in an aquatic ecosystem. Take a look at this picture and think about your own experiences in rivers or lakes or ponds nearby. What other organisms live in aquatic ecosystems? Take some time today to do some research where you study a specific type of ecosystem and the different organisms that are important to that environment. Have fun and happy learning.